Hola and hello to all who are joining us for our Lifting Up Latino Entrepreneurs panel. My name is Emily Barsky and I'm the editor of the Business Record. This event today is in partnership with Ola Iowa as part of Hispanic Heritage Month. I'm sorry, I think you might be on mute. Thank you. Hello, my name is Tar Macias and I'm the president of Ola American News and Ola Iowa. Ola Iowa.com is a media company that focuses on the contributions that the Latino community brings to the state of Iowa. We, we publish our news stories in both English and Spanish. We invite you to follow us on Facebook at Ola American News, where we will share all our stories, as well as we will share this panel, the Spanish version that we recorded earlier today. And I would like to thank the business record for their partnership with Ola Iowa to bring you today's panel. There are more than 250,000 Latinos living in the state of Iowa, making us the biggest minority in the state. And just like our panelists today, the Iowa Latino community is very diverse. Thank you, Emily, and thank you, Business Record. Great, well, thank you, Tar and Ola, for working together on this. Uh, while we felt this topic was important to talk about during Hispanic Heritage Month, the su success of Latino entrepreneurs is important all year round, as Tara was just mentioning. There are more than 1,500 Latino businesses in the metro, generating $160 million in annual revenue, according to a recently released report called Nuestro Iowa. But there are a variety of barriers Latinos in our community face, and some of them are specific to our business owners. Today, we want to focus on what can be done to solve those challenges while also hearing lessons of success from our speakers. So now I'll let Tar introduce our panelists. Thank you, Emily. And I know all four of the panelists are their friends of mine, but I would like to ask them to introduce themselves, tell them, tell me their name, the name of their business, and the services and goods that services provide. And also please add where you come from. Can we start with you, Blanca? Hi, yes, good morning. My name is Blanca Plasencia and I am co-owner of El Fogón Mexican Restaurant. We have two locations in West Des Moines. I am from Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico, and I've been in Iowa for almost 20 years. And I am very, very passionate about businesses, entrepreneurship, and um, I love to help people uh, whatever I can. Um, supporting the community uh, that are interested in business and entrepreneurship. Thank you, Blanca. Uh, Raul, do you, would you like to go next? Yeah, sure. Hi, my name is Raul Cunaro. I am from Spain and I've been in Iowa since uh, 2010 of 2013. So it's gonna be about nine years. I currently own um, three businesses that are working, two on the cleaning industry, one construction and one for commercial. Uh, and I own um, a company that uh, give classes to uh, small children, like Spanish and soccer classes and tumbling, um, two-year-old to six-year-olds. And I am launching now my fourth business, which is a residential uh, residential uh, cleaning app, which is kind of like Uber, but for house cleaning. And um, yeah, that's all. Thank you, Raul. Junior, please. Yeah, so my name is Jorge Guadalupe Ibarra Gonzalez. Everybody knows me as Junior Ibarra. I'm co-owner of Ibarra Realty Group and partnered with Keller Williams. Uh, so we're in the real estate industry sector uh, of the Des Moines metro market, and we help with residential um, purchases with our community. So uh, consumers that are looking to sell, buy a home, build a home, or invest in real estate here in the Des Moines metro. And we also help with commercial clients uh, that are looking to either lease a space for their commercial business or their restaurant space or anything in the retail space uh, or purchase commercial buildings as they continue to grow. I was born in Los Mochis, Sinaloa, Mexico, so Viva Mexico. And I've been in uh, Des Moines, Iowa since in the early 90s, so a little over 30 years. So this is my home. This is where my wife and my kids and my family is, and I, I love being part of it. So uh, yeah, that's a little bit about me. Thank you, Junior. And last but not least, please, Carolina. Hi, my name is Carolina Hotman. I own a home bakery. The name is Euphoria Cakes. Um, I specialize in custom made cakes for birthdays, uh, any kind of celebrations, dessert tables, um, K-pops, cupcakes, anything you can imagine I can create for you. 
Um, I'm originally from Colombia, from Cali, Colombia, and I've been in uh, Des Moines for two years. And I love the support that the community has given me here. My business has been very successful since I moved to Des Moines. Thank you very much, Carolina. And I know all four of you, and I know all of you are uh, have been a business person for many years now. And I know a lot of times people only see the success that you have. But the, question, the first question I would like to ask, I would like for each one of you to share what have what have been the biggest obstacles or barrier that each one of you face as a business owner? And I would like to start with Junior for, the, for this question. Yeah, so, you know, when I started, I, I'm, a, I'm an engineer from Iowa State. I was an oil and gas engineer before I became a real estate entrepreneur. And uh, when I left the, the, the engineering uh, space and, and, and pursued my, my passion of entrepreneurship and, and small business, the, the biggest barrier I, I found, because I wanted to cater to not just the English speaking community, but the Spanish speaking community. And in the real estate space, I couldn't find any Spanish content. <laughs> so I had to invest a lot of my own time, money, and energy to create that content myself in order to be able to provide a good product and educational component because our, our, our real estate team is based on the foundation of education in our communities to empower people with information so that they can make informative decisions in the real estate space. And so I had to invest a lot of that of my, out of my own pocket uh, in order to be able to serve the communities that I wanted to serve. So those were one of the biggest obstacles. Luckily now, you know, as we've grown, we are now the number one uh, real estate team in our brokerage at Keller Williams. You know, we are now helping a little over 350 families per year uh, realize their home ownership goals uh, in, in the Des Moines Metro. And so with some of that success has also come some strategic partnerships such as with Keller Williams. And now they're in helping us invest in, in realizing you know, some of the legal contracts in English and in Spanish. So we have that to be able to put that in front of our consumer base so that they can read the contracts in either English and Spanish, whatever they prefer, uh, and ultimately be able to move forward throughout the whole process to realize their home ownership goals, right? So, so those were, that was one of the obstacles in my sector of the business in the real estate space space with just the content and being able to deliver it in the language that the consumer wanted to, 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 to engage in, right? So uh, luckily that's becoming a little easier. Uh, the second one was just access to home, like home loans <laughs> uh, and, and having not only the access to home loans, but also access to talent in, in, that could speak in either English or Spanish to be able to provide education to the consumer uh, in, in regards to home ownership. Uh, loans and business loans, right, as well to, to expand their businesses. So, so those are some of the business uh, obstacles that uh, are, are getting a lot better. I'll be honest about that. And what's awesome about Des Moines and the melting pot that Des Moines is, is that there's a lot of new partnerships in the metro that are, that are actually putting time and energy and money into delivering these certain products to the Latino community. So um, it's getting better. It can only get better is what I propose. And there's more strategic partnerships such as this with Business Record in Ola, Iowa, where we can help each other out. As we like to say on our team, we, we have a hashtag that we say stronger together, right? So uh, strategic partnerships uh, will continue to help us out as we all grow our Latino owned businesses and, and, and cater to not just Spanish communities, but English communities or either or, right? So that's my, my two cents on that. Thank you. Uh, Blanca, same questions. What have been some of the obstacles or barriers? that you have faced? Um, kind of the same thing, the education part. Um, we as Latinos are entrepreneurs by nature. You know, we sell whatever we can to survive. And it is sometimes it is very, very hard to find a business model that is profitable, that can make profit. And then that it is good for everyone. Um, we are very interested in making um, a business that is good for everyone, for our employees. I, we, want them, we want them to make good money, to feel good at their jobs. But also we wanna find a business model that gives us a profit so we can grow. So finding that type of information or education, learning how to manage the business properly, legally, um, 
to do it the best that we can so we we don't get in trouble like i always tell my husband that many people go to college and pay for a college education to learn all these things that we don't know and we pay by getting fines by making things wrong by losing money that's how we pay our life college so yeah same thing the education the business models all the information to make a business bigger and more profitable and better for everyone thank you blanca raul what are some of the obstacles you have faced uh of course like capital is a big one but that's for everyone but to me as an immigrant i think the the first the biggest obstacle came from me um and it was my my glass ceiling uh, i think we immigrants we have a lower glass ceiling than the people that is born here and, and raised here um and it was my limit right what i thought it was great and successful at the beginning my first job was $35,000 a year as a manager and I thought that was amazing because I was coming from a country where that was amazing but here then you learn and then okay maybe that that limit that I put to myself it was really low and I think that a lot of immigrants that I work with here they put themselves that um, that glass ceiling uh, really low and they maybe they are happy with whatever they found first and they, they don't try to improve themselves and there's a lot of opportunities for improvement and for growth and if you want and you look for them so i think that's that was my my biggest thing and i think that's one of the, the biggest problems that the immigrant community has is where do we set ourselves or, or where do we set our limit thank you raul so junior said resources in a language that they can understand Blanket said education on, on business education and capital. Yeah, you, you're right. Capital is, is, is a big obstacle. Carolina, can you add something to it that's been a barrier for your business? Well, I think I kind of agree with all of you and um, with Raul um, mostly because sometimes it's on us that we just put a limit because we're a minority, because we feel afraid of speaking the language, because we have an accent. So or if we don't feel comfortable, it's not our first language. So those barriers and those limits are, if they come from us, we can always um, ask. Uh, that, that happened to me and that was happening to me. I was stuck because I didn't know how to, how to grow, but I started asking questions, asking to other people, to other entrepreneurs, and they gave me information they told me to go here they're going to teach you they're going to help you with a business plan so i think um that we have to we have to stop putting those limits um ourselves and start asking going out there networking and trying to find those answers that we need to be successful thank you very much Thank you all. And I'd like to know from each of you, what does support look like from the broader business community that has been really helpful to you? And how can we make sure that other Latino entrepreneurs have those resources as well? Uh, Blanca, can we start with you? Oh, I think you're on mute. Thank you, yes. So yes, I am very grateful because um, through networking, I've met amazing people who are always willing to listen and to help me and give me resources. Um, I think that's a very important part to be part of a network of people. And like Carolina said, uh, we should be brave enough to get out of your comfort zone and reach out to people and talk about your needs. Um, I am so thankful for all the people that has helped me and given me information, resources, material. Um, but one thing that I wish I could get more of is sometimes when I get a resource or you know a, ref a referral, they ask me to call someone. And then I call and leave messages and, and sometimes I don't get an answer. And something that I would like, or I would love to get from um, the bigger companies or the bigger, I don't know how to say the bigger people, I don't know, is um, I would love for them to be open and to listen 
to our needs, sometimes they really don't want to do business with you because they feel that you are too small because they feel that you're not ready and they don't want to waste the time on you. So I will, something that will help me and I think will help our community is if people are open to listen to our needs and to at least give us some advice on how or where we need that preparation so they, they want to work with us. Thank you, Raul, same question for you. Um, what, what support from the broader business community is helpful? Um, I have to sell that. I have to say that the support here is, is amazing. Um, I come from Spain and we don't have that many uh, organizations helping uh, entrepreneurs. I think just for everybody, not, not for the minority community. If anybody want to start a business, they can go to, to the SBS and they help you with anything. They give you referrals. You can get grants to start businesses. There is so much help for all the communities here to, to, to start businesses. And that really surprised me when I came here, how much the people was willing to help for free. You don't have to pay anything, they give you advice, they give you, tell you where to go. Um, and that was amazing when I, when I moved here to start a business. And I think that it's also come from us to to serve, to look for that that help because all the people is like oh well I don't get any help it's like okay are you looking for it because the help is out there and there's a lot of big companies helping and there's a lot of organizations helping and I think um, yeah I can I can say that uh, that we need more maybe yes we do need more but the first thing is we need to start looking for it. Uh, Junior, what would you add? So I just kind of, like they said, what's, what's awesome is that there is a lot of content out there. So us, you know, going out there and seeking it is good. What those big businesses, I think, uh, can help us with is just, you know, identify and support the, the Latino-owned businesses that already are very successful and already talented and support them. So, um, you know, like in the real estate sector, for example, I speak to that because that's what I know best, um, you know. Uh, I was in a conference in, in, uh, in San Diego last year, and there's a brand new report here that's uh, just Iowa numbers, and it shows that the only, one of the only reasons that the United States is having population growth is because of Latinos. Uh, I think us Latinos like to have lots of babies. That's one of the reasons, right? And we're the youngest uh, group out there, you know, one in every four Latinos, uh, one in every four millennials is Latino. So uh, in Des Moines, uh, I can't remember the exact number, but it's in that report and we'll post that link to that report is, I, I believe it was 30 to 40% of the Des Moines public system is Latino. So that just tells you immediately, the numbers aren't lying, that the future of, uh, of Des Moines Metro and surrounding suburbs is, is very diverse and Latino kind of leading the way as the largest minority group out there. At the, at the San Diego conference, uh, that was Latino driven around uh, Latino, uh, you know, just the Latino population as a whole. It, it mentioned how, you know, uh, the Latino cohort made up 2.7 uh, trillion of the, the gross domestic product. So if we were our own country, just US Latinos alone, we would rank number seven in the world. So that just shows you the strength of the monetary power that Latinos has as we continue to grow in this, in this country. And so uh, the CEO of Disney was there, the CEO of Netflix, was there, the CEO of Nike was there, and they said, we are finding Latino talent that is bilingual to be part of our infrastructure, because if you are not, then you will be out of business in the next 30 to 40 years. So if the CEOs of those major companies are doing that, what are the local businesses in Des Moines Metro doing to partner up with Latino talent uh, to help support uh, the businesses out there as well, right? Uh, Disney sh showcased, you know, not just Coco or Encanto, the new two newest movies that came out. They had like pages of on pages of Disney movies that are coming out that are catering to the Latino population. And that just goes to show you why the local business community needs to partner up with local Latino talent. I'm very, very fortunate that recently we've had, we have a new partnership. Not only do we have a really great partnership with Keller Williams, uh, as far as my team goes, 
Bar Realty Group. We also just partnered up with Invest DSM, which is a sub entity of kind of the, the, the city, you know, who's doing a really amazing job uh, in making uh, some parts of the Des Moines Metro really, really thrive and take it to the next level. And now we're, we've listed a couple of their properties, which is awesome because the people buying houses in the Des Moines central area are very diverse and there's opportunities to serve that community in English or Spanish, right? So that's another really cool strategic relationship and us partnering and I'm sure there's many more opportunities out there to create win-win relationships with some big companies. The second thing I would say is access to capital uh, again and some of us have mentioned that and there's opportunities I think to help uh, take take these small businesses like ourselves and help us grow with strategic relationship and also maybe introduce it as they say it's not what you know it's who you know right so there's probably a lot of people that uh, we can be introduced to through two uh, that we may not know to help each other out and, and create those win-win scenarios for everyone. So that's what I would add. Thank you. And Carolina, what would you say about um, the broader support from the business community? Um, I've been getting a lot of support from um, the community in the mind, not only like businesses from people that I um, met at the Chamber of Commerce that I belong to, um, they always uh, try to support me. Um, the resources that I try to find for my business are um, like being updated with techniques for my cakes and all of that. But I was seeing that I was getting stuck on that part and I wanted to grow my business. So I started asking questions about where can I learn how to manage my business, how to be a better leader, how to um, make a business plan. So all those resources, we have all those resources here. We just need to ask and we just need to find the right person to go to and um, have those questions answered. And another thing that I wanted to say is that um, I think the, the Latin community here in Des Moines or in Iowa, we should get together more and we should do more events together. That way we can showcase our talent um, to everybody else and invite everybody else, not only the Latin community, but all the communities in, in Des Moines or in Iowa. Because when they see that we are getting together and supporting each other, um, more people are gonna start supporting us. Yeah. Thank you, Carolina, that, that, was, that was amazing. And you mentioned about resources. So I, I would like to ask each one of you, how do you work on your own personal and business development? as a business person, and what are some of the resources that you use that you can share with us? Uh, could you just start, Raul? Yeah, sure. Um, I I work, personally, I work on, on just learning. I, I read a lot, That's something I started doing um, a few years ago, and I, I wish I started before. And, and anybody that is successful in business, they will tell you the same, that personal development and, and learning is, is one of the most important things you can do for your business because the, the more you learn, the better your business is going to go. So just reading books, you can find, you know, in your library free books if you don't want to pay for them or buy them. There's a lot of business, a lot of books about business. And of course, I think as an immigrant, if you want to do good in business here, you really need to learn English. So if you haven't yet, just go to class, learn English. So I would say personal development. And then, you know, everything is on YouTube. So anything you need to learn, if you don't want to read it, just go watch a video, just learn, 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 find people that can help you and teach you. And then, you know, personal development. You cannot get, you, you cannot improve your business unless you start learning new things. Otherwise it's going to be always the same. So that would be my advice for that. Thank you, Raul. Blanca, what are some of the resources that you use for your own personal development? Um, I also like to read a lot. Actually, well, I'm not reading lately. I am listening to audiobooks. And I love that there are a lot of free audiobooks on YouTube. So when I'm driving, I'm listening to an audiobook. When I take a shower, I li I'm listening to an audiobook. And my whole family is too. <laughs> um, when I go for a walk on a bike ride, I'm listening to audiobooks. And we also work with a coach um, that has been very, very helpful. He is very uh, talented and knowledge, knowledgeable, and he is helping us with resources and then 
with pushing, 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 uh, pushing our team to do more, to do, to do it better, to work more, and to be specific on what we want to do. Um, I think having a mentor or having a coach is very helpful, and that's pretty much it. Thank, thank you, Blanca. Junior, what, what are some of the resources you used for your own personal development? Much like they said, investing in yourself is the best return on investment, right? So I listen to a lot of podcasts. Uh, if you guys want to learn about investing in real estate, Get Rich Education is one of my favorite podcasts out there. So if you want to follow one, it talks a lot about how to invest in real estate and how to make passive income. So one of my favorite quotes is, is if you're not making money while you're sleeping, you will work until you are dead. So find ways to make money while you're, you are sleeping. Uh, and one of the best ways to do that is to own real estate, right? So uh, that's one of my favorite ones. So investing in, 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 in this right here is one of the best return on investments you can have. Uh, I would recommend, even, even though it's real estate related, I would still recommend this book to everyone just for business, just strategies is the millionaire real estate agent it just talks about how to manage a crm a customer relationship module how to do th it, like by investing in that and knowing what you're doing to touch your client 36 times a year you're going to get a certain return on investment by just taking care of the clients that have already done business with you so what tools are you using to be able to uh, you know, make sure that your clients, you don't just help them one time, but you're in touch and in a relationship with them for the rest of their lives as soon as they get in front of you, right? Uh, so it, it gives you all the tips and tricks of how to do that long term. And I think that's applicable in any industry, right? Uh, and so uh, that would be another book I would recommend. Uh, finding mentors would be my second thing. Uh, like Blanca said, like I invest a lot and pay other people to help me learn. <laughs> and I pay those mentors uh, to, to be able to just take what they've, what they failed at and hopefully avoid that failure. And I also do the same for others. I, I, I hope to share my failures so that they don't have to do the same thing and, and seek other mentors too that, uh, are, that are already that are already succeeding on what you want to do. And there's tons of them out there that will literally spend time with you just to share the, what, 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 what they're doing to succeed, even though you're in the same industry. There's a ton of them. So look them out and, and learn from them. Uh, the, uh, the, 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 other, the third one would be have a team of professionals. That's one of the best pieces of advice I was giving by one of my mentor is, do you have your go-to CPA? Do you have your go-to business attorney? Do you have your go-to financial advisor? Do you have your go-to doctor that you go and see every day uh, or at least once a year for your own physical health, right? Do you have uh, your, your go-to uh, all of like your light, your insurance agent, you should have like all your go-to professionals for every part of your life that are about your age so that you can grow with them and you should be meeting them multiple times a year, right? Um, in, in order to seek advice on what you, how you want to, how you grew this year, how you want to grow next year, et cetera, et cetera. And then the last piece is just, there's a, like Raul was saying, there's a ton of stuff out there already, like the Small Business Association, the SBA, there's, there's a lot of support there in English and Spanish now. There's a lot of sources that are already out there, the, the Des Moines Commerce and all of those. Go out there and get, you know, shake hands, meet people and find and seek that knowledge like Raul said, uh, because a lot of it is out there and we're very, very blessed that we're in Des Moines, Iowa that provides those resources for our small businesses. Thank you, Junior. And Gerardo Duran asked if you could uh, put on the chat the name of the podcast that you mentioned, please. Yeah. And, and lastly, Carolina, I know, I know in your business, you use your creativity a lot. And if, if, if the people listening today haven't tried Euphoria Cakes, you need to try them. Their cookies and cakes are amazing. And, and, and her creativity, really, every, every time we order a cake, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, um, this is delicious, but at the same time, it looks beautiful. So try, try uh, check them out on Facebook. And Carolina, tell me, where do you go to, to feed on that creativity that you, that, that you need in order to keep pumping up all, all the beautiful projects that you do? Um, I try to watch a lot of videos and keep updating myself on new techniques and new tools to um, make my cookies and my cakes better. And I've been doing that for a really long time, but um, right now I'm also trying to uh, 
learn about how to manage my business, how to have a business plan and how to make my business more successful. And I think that that's very important. Not only learn about what your business is about, but also learn about how to be a good leader, how to manage your business and all the aspects that involve having a successful business. Because to have a good team, I think that you need to have a little bit of knowledge of every single part of your business. That way you can hire the right people for you. Thank you, Carolina. I wanna to go to the question in the chat that Bobby had. What suggestions do you all have for getting more involved with helping Latino entrepreneurs if you're not someone who is bilingual? Anyone wanna chime in on that? I'll chime in. <laughs> um, I mean, just go out and have coffee with whomever you want to get involved with, right? Like, so whatever sector or industry that's really calling out your attention, go out. There's tons of bilingual Latino talent out there. Sit down and have coffee, shake hands, and figure out how to help each other out. Like, or or who you know that they need to know, and they know someone that you need to know, and share those resources amongst each other. So I would say just reach out. Like. Uh, I'm all open. If anyone wants to reach out to me, uh, you can find me on LinkedIn or Facebook. I'd be more than happy. I love shaking hands. I just love people in general. So I'm always up for some coffee. So feel free to reach out to me. Awesome. Anybody else? I would like to ask a few statistics. Uh, out, of out of the 215,000 Latinos living in Iowa, 70% of, of them uh, were born in the United States. That's, that means that even if English is not their, their first language, eventually when they hit the school system, it's gonna become their dominant language. So out of the remaining 30% that, that all the four panelists and myself were born outside of the United States, as you can see, many of us are bilingual. So really it's only a smaller percentage of the Latino in Iowa who do, who do not speak Spanish and in English. So therefore, a big misconception is that if you're trying to reach the Latino, you have to do it in Spanish. And uh, you don't have to, but it helps. I think all five of uh, the panelists, four panelists and myself, we appreciate when somebody makes the effort to speak in Spanish to us, even though we speak English. You know, as long as it's not done in a condescending way. And, uh, and, uh, and with that in mind, don't wait to, to, to reach out to somebody just because you think they might not speak, they might not speak English. Uh, and, and like Junior said, reach out to people. I think you're gonna really find out we got more things in common than things that make you, make us different. One thing I'd like to know from you all, and um, you can think back to either starting your businesses or maybe something that you face now, but what has been something that is really frustrating um, for you in the process of either getting capital, um, starting your business um, that you, want to make sure that other people don't have to face those frustrations. Um, Carolina, we can start with you. Um, I think it's finding the right people, uh, finding like the, the, the right resource to go to because um, it's, it's, it's hard. It took me a year and a half to find the right place to go and sit down and not only the person that is helping me is bilingual. We can speak English and Spanish, and um, it's just it's just that finding the right place to go. It's very it's, it's sometimes it's very hard. You have you have to keep asking and keep um, getting out there and networking until you find the the right place to go to and to learn about your business and how to grow your business. But I think that's one of the more more difficult parts for me. Blanca, what about you? What's been frustrating that you hope we can alleviate for other people? Oh, I don't know. Well, lately, what's been frustrated, frustrating is the lack of uh, help working. I mean, like, it's very hard to find employees. Um, right now, we're finally good. And something that is very frustrating is part of the education part, because I take my responsibility. I'm not very good at training people. So I think I, I need to learn how to train people better so they can feel good at their jobs. And then we can make a good match and a good team. And I think 
a lot of that problem that we get a lot of, um, I don't know how to say this, that, que se van los trabajadores transition, I don't know how to call this, but people leave their jobs because they don't feel good at the job because they want something better. And I think we need to have this engagement. Uh, we need to give them something of more value that once makes, para que ellos quieran quedarse, <laughs> how do you say that? So they want to yeah. stay? Exactly, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so we need to make um, opportunities for them so they want to stay with us. So for me, learning how to be a leader, how to train people, how to talk to people, how to be a better person, how to help others without ending up doing what they are supposed to do or without taking the responsibilities that they are supposed to do and you take them because you're helping them. I don't know, it's kind of a lot of education, um, get it, getting to know for sure what you want. And I don't know, I'm kind of <laughs> thinking of a lot of things, I'm sorry, <laughs> confusing, but yeah, just that, um, getting to know for sure what is it that you want. Um, Junior, what about you? What's been frustrating? So we are, you know, now helping commercial clients again in both languages, right? Uh, yeah, and and I'll be honest, on the English side of things, we we don't struggle very much on helping our English uh, commercial clients uh, continue to grow. Uh, yet we do run into more uh, barriers, I guess you could call it, in helping our small you know, uh, Latino clients, and this is just me speaking from actual experience of my client base right now on the commercial side of things and helping them grow to that next level. Uh, just because they, I, I'll, I'll call it a, they have a thin file, right? Uh, uh, and, and so maybe the banks aren't quite as, um, you know, apt to lend them money to, to help them go to that next level, right? So, so that delays the growth is what that does, right? Because then you, like what I see is they end up, well, I'm gonna wait, you know, five to 10 years and save my own money and then grow, right? When when the opportunity to to act is now, right? Strike while the iron is hot and to help continue that growth that be, they're, they're seeking growth opportunities because they have a ton of good momentum happening in their business. Yet the access to capital is a little bit less accessible, I believe, you know, unless I don't know what I don't know, um, but yet I, I've been looking out there for opportunities. And in the commercial sector, for anyone that owns a business and wants to continue to grow, uh, and if for whatever reason, I'm having a harder tr a harder time uh, in, in helping helping my Latino client, my commercial clients. What's awesome is I see that there's a new, like there's Purpose Bank out there that's helping a lot of women. That's awesome. And I love seeing that, you know? So like, uh, is there other opportunities too to help the Latino, you know, uh, sector of the market uh, and other banks that are wanting to cater? What, what I have seen in the residential realm, more banks, now catering and helping provide home loans yet yeah, i still see a very limited opportunity or a very limited outreach in regards to commercial uh lending uh to help commercial owned latino businesses grow so that's my two cents on my own experience with what i'm dealing with right now i like the way blanca kind of phrased it i'll just talk about what i'm dealing with right now <laughs> right that that gave me a better way to answer that right and raul what frustrations have you faced that we can help um, prevent for others? Um, okay, so I think the frustrations we have as an immigrant owning a business are the same like any business owner. It doesn't matter if they are immigrant or not. We face the same one as, as, as Blanca say, you know, client, uh, employee retention is a big one. Um, so I, I guess the frustration is find how to get those partners that we need as a business owner um, how to learn how to outsource the things that we can outsource. So I, I guess my advice to people, any anybody just starting a business is find anything that you can outsource and find somebody that specializes in that and are good at that. I just hire them. You know, if you need a telemarketer, a designer, an accountant, don't try to take everything yourself when you're starting a business. Find people that is good at what they do. Just give them that part and focus on the part of your business, what is important for your business. Um, and that that goes for everybody. You don't have to be an immigrant. So I, I think that would be my advice for 
not get any frustrations. Thank, thank you, Raul. And that's a great segue to my last question. And, uh, and I'm gonna uh, repeat what uh, Blanca said earlier. I also believe the Latinos, Hispanics, that we have an entrepreneurial spirit. What advice would you give to people who, who are starting out and they have the dreams to open it up their own business? What would be something that you would tell your own self when you first were starting in this journey? And can we start with Carolina, please? Um, have more knowledge about uh, what you want to do. Um, have a little bit more knowledge about the, the business that you want to start. And um, maybe not just be passionate, like not just follow that business because you're very passionate about it, but just have a little bit more like ask questions, go out there and know uh, your losses, what, are, what do you need to do to uh, make it successful? I think that I, I would love to have that before I started my business, have that, the knowledge that I'm having now, that I'm learning right now about my business. Um, it would have been way more successful two years ago um, if, I, if I had that knowledge. And Junior? Um, I would say, you know, for anyone, uh, whether Latino or not, just any small business owner for that matter, is just having, you know, a plan, a business plan. So that's, I think, one of the biggest things that with our commercial clients is we, um, you know, every, we all get excited. Like, I want to I wanna open up this business. Let's go find the property. I'm like, whoa, 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 hold up. What's your plan? <laughs> like the who, the what, the when, the where, the why, and the how, right? Like what's your six month plan, one year, two year, three year, four year, five year, 10 year plan for your business and who's helping you support that vision that you have to make this a successful business. So having a business plan, well, uh, I learned that the hard way uh, and not having one and just completely failing through it, you know, but I, as I like to say, failing adds up. That's a podcast that I'm actually starting to do here in the Des Moines Metro. So if anyone is on here, here listening and is, has, is running a very successful business. I'm going to, to have all of these entrepreneurs on this panel on that podcast. And we just talk about failure <laughs> because failing adds up, right? So that's the name of the podcast that'll be airing here soon. Uh, and so if anyone else is on here listening to that, I would love to have you there as a guest. It's just a, a side project with my partner, uh, Antonio Romero on that, just a passion project. So, uh, and with that said, just having that, that business plan is key. Uh, and then the second thing, like I mentioned, I think earlier was just like seeking out that mentorship who's already succeeding at what you want to succeed at and go out and find that those people and shake hands with them invite them out to coffee uh, don't be afraid to pay for that consistent mentorship right uh, and some won't charge some will charge but I'm, I, I I have both kind you know and 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 it, trust me when I say this that's the one of the best investments that you can make is just learning from other people's mistakes uh, so that you don't make the same mistakes as you grow your business thank you junior and let me ask you how many years did it take you to create your business plan after you open up your business I don't want to answer that question. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. It, it no, took no. me eight years. Yeah. No, yeah, you know, uh, I'd say after we got, it's about four years to really like, after like really good mentorship and guidance, they, they're like, Junior, you're just kind of doing what you're doing because you know how to work hard and you're just putting your head down and getting to work and things are happening, but you don't have a plan for the future, right? So, uh, so what is this? What is this that you're working towards? What does it look like in five, 10, 15, 20 years from now? So yeah, I'd say it took me about four years. Once I had someone, you know, I didn't know what I didn't know, but they told me like have put this vision into a, an actual physical document, right? And so that's uh, the, one of the best pieces of advice. I wish if I would have done that year year zero, right? Before year one, who, who, who knows what could be, but uh, I'm still very, very blessed and very grateful for everything that is happening in, you know, the world that I live in with my business partner, Ryan Cahoy and our, our partnership with Keller Williams, so. Well, you're smarter than me. It took me eight years to realize that. So you're way ahead of the game. Thank you. And Raul, what advice will you, will you give somebody starting out? Uh, so several of the things that we talk about, like the first one is learning. It doesn't matter what, what you know, it, it matters what you learn every day. So if you don't, if you're an immigrant, your English is not good, keep learning. 
if you are just about to start a business, start reading books about, you know, one-on-one business and then grow on that. So keep learning. That will be one of that, the, my biggest advice. As, as you learn and you figure out what you are good at, then you also have to figure out what you are not good at and then hire somebody to do it. So it's like, just learn, learn about yourself, get to know what you are good at, focus on doing that and everything else in your business, just hire somebody to do it. Just hire, if you are good at sales, but you're not good at operations because you're not organized then hire an operations guy or vice versa. If you're good at operations, then hire a sales guy because um, nobody can do everything and nobody's good at everything. So just keep learning and then whatever you're not good at, hire somebody to do it. Great point, because I, if I need a cake, I know who to call. If I try to make it, it's going to be a disaster. <laughs> and and to finish up the, 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 this round of questions in, in uh, today's event, Blanca, please uh, tell me, what do you recommend somebody starting out? Um, I, I really will tell them to believe, to have faith that you can do it. Yes, you can do it because we all have fears. I mean, what if, what if, and we are thinking of what if, and we stop even before we start. So don't be afraid. Um, we all have problems every day and we all have the capacity to solve problems. We will have problems for sure, yes, but we have the capacity. I really believe that God made us with that capacity to solve problems. So just believe in yourself, have, have faith. Um, if you put your heart and your soul into what you're doing, everything is gonna work out. And if it doesn't work out, then you learn from that failure. But um, don't be afraid, just believe that you can do it. And I think we all can do whatever we want. God wants us to fulfill our dreams. And I really believe we can all do it. We just have to put our soul into it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Blanca. And I, I want to thank each one of you, Carolina, Blanca, Junior, and Raul, for, for spending this, this morning with us and, and sharing a little bit of your, of your wisdom. And, uh, and I'd like to, to close this out by saying that on the, on the report that Emily uh, mentioned earlier, Nuestro Iowa, they mentioned this 1,500 Latino businesses just in the metro area, generating, generating nearly $160 million in annual revenue. And I believe, you know, there's a lot more than that because the, the uh, micro business are booming right now. A lot of people, thanks to the pandemic, a lot of people figure, man, I'm gonna open up my own uh, bakery in my house. I'm gonna open up my own food uh, selling out, out, of a, out of a little market or out of, out of the farmer's market. So, so the micro business are growing and there's, there's literally uh, hundreds and not thousands of Latino owned businesses in the metro area. And right here, you see four of the of the key ones, so four of the leaders in in, in the in the Latino uh, entrepreneur uh, community. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Emily. Thank you, Business Record, for partnering with Ola Iowa and to bring him uh, uh, this panel to life. Thank you very much, Emily. Thank you all very much for being with us and sharing your insights. And we'll have coverage um, in our upcoming products. <laughs>